Hi, I'm Nate Mullins, and I'm going to show you a math tutorial here on how to add and subtract time. And when I say that, I mean time in the format hours, minutes, and seconds. And you'll learn how to do this in grade school. A lot of students struggle with this, and a lot of adults too, because, and there's a reason for that. And why is, why is this difficult when we're adding and subtracting time in that format? Well, it's not because we're stupid, it's because we've been trained all through our lives and all through schooling to think in terms of base 10. It's sort of like our mathematical language in that we use the digits zero through nine. Well, when we're doing time, there's 60 minutes in an hour. So that tens digit, there's six tens of minutes. And likewise, there's 60 seconds in a minute. So there's six tens of seconds in that minute. And because of that six, we're using a base six, and so in, in base six, we only use the digits zero through five. Now, if you're into computer programming and you know something about the binary code, that's a base two, so you can only use zero and one. Um, so you, like one would be one, but then when you get to two, that would be one zero, and three would be one one, and then when you get to four, that would be one zero zero. Uh, so I'll show you. I'll give you a little bit of a crash course in here and converting the base sixes so that you can do these calculations. And it also makes it confusing because we have to switch back and forth between, you know, the ones digit still going to have a base 10, but then the tens digit and the, again, in the seconds and minutes is going to be a base six. So we're switching back and forth to make it even a little bit more confusing. So I'm going to give you a crash course in here. How do we convert to base six? I really hope you don't drive like that, maniac. Okay, take a number. We're going to take one that's uh, less than 36 because when you get to 36, that's 6 squared or 6 to the second power, in which case you're going to have a three-digit um, outcome. So we'll just say when you're adding just a few times, you're going to get a number less than 36. So that first digit is going to be the number of times 6 goes into that number, and the second digit is going to be your remainder. And that's, again, we're only going to be seeing numbers zero through five. You're not going to see uh, in the tens, if you're looking at a clock and you're looking at the tens of minutes, you're never going to see a six, seven, eight, or a nine. It can only be one through five or zero through five. So zero through five is just that. Now, first digit, number of times six goes into X, second digit remainder. Okay, now when you get to six, that will translate to a one O oh, because when divided by six, that's just one six with, a rem with no remainder. Seven divided by six is one with the remainder of one. Eight divided by six is one with the remainder of two, all the way up to 11 divided by six, that's one with the remainder of five. Now when you get to 12, you don't write one six, you write two zero. You carry one over just like you would in base 10 when you're at 9 and you go to 10. So your 12, that's two sixes with no remainder. 13 divided by 6, 2, number of times goes into it, with a remainder of 1. All the way up to 17, if you divide that by 6, you get 2 with a remainder of 5. So that's the formula here. And then when you get to 18, that's three zero. When you get to 24, that's four zero, because four times six. When you get to 30, that's five times six, and no remainder, so it looks like a five zero. And 35, that would be five sixes with a remainder of five. Now, when you get to 36, it's gonna look like, it's gonna look like 100, or just one zero zero. So you're gonna get a three digit number for anything 36 all the way up to 215. Now we can get to 216, you're going to get a four digit number because that's that's uh, six cubed, six to the third power, which is going to be a 216 itself. You'll see below here in just a, just a minute. But you're, you're likely to, in our calculations, we're only going to be worrying about this. But just theoretically, if, you, if you're adding up a bunch of times, say you have to uh, calculate uh, links of songs, for instance, uh, in a playlist, and you don't have, you're not around your iTunes, which automatically does that for you. So if X is 36 all the way up to 215, you're going to have a three-digit 
outcome. And the first two digits are the number of times a six goes into that, but then that's converted to a base six. And I'll show you exactly what that means. What, what the heck does this mean anyway? I'll show you just below. And then your third and final digit, just like up here, is going to be your remainder. So for instance, okay, 36, that's six squared, or six times six. But you convert that six to a to a 10, and of course you're multiplying by six, so you add that zero. Just like when you're multiplying by 10, you add another zero. Since we're in base six here, we multiply by six, we tack on another zero, so it looks like or 36 is going to look like a hundred or a one zero zero anyway. Uh, 42. That's seven times six. Well, seven from up here looks like a one one. So seven one one, and then times six add to zero. 48. That's eight. That looks like a one two times six. You tack on another zero or one two zero, and so on, all the way till you get to this, and then. When you get to 72, that's 12 times 6, and your 12 looks like a 2, 0 from up here. Times 6, you tack on the 0, it looks like 200, or 2, 0, 0 anyway, and so forth. Now, when you get to a different power, when you get to 216, that's 6 cubed, and of course, just like in base 10, 10 cubed is 1,000. 6 cubed in base 6, 216, that's a three, it's, it's gonna be a one followed by that number, that power is the number of zeros that follows. So that's gonna be a, look like a thousand or one zero zero zero. 1296 is six to the fourth, that's one followed by four zeros. Six to the fifth would be a one followed by five zeros, six to the sixth, one followed by six zeros and so forth. So now let's do a couple examples. We're going to two addition and two subtraction problems here. What I've done is I've, I've, it's very important when you're calculating to be very neat in your writing and line up the columns and then note that the ten, this is the tens of seconds and the tens of minutes that I was talking about in, in one of our first slides there. And these are in base six. Now the, now the actual number of minutes, the ones digit, is in a base 10 and the same thing over here with seconds. So we're going to add 4 hours 54 minutes and 32 seconds to 17 hours 28 minutes and 41 seconds. And uh, I just have a note, you know, when we carry things over just to make it a little bit more clear. So let's do this calculation. 2 and 1 make 3. This is a base 10 column. You're not carrying over anything. Now 3 and 4 that makes 7. Now recall from the previous uh, well, two slides ago, that seven looks like a, a one, one. That's seven divided by six is one. That's the number of times it goes in. That's your carryover. You're in carryover to, into this next column with the remainder of one. And you write that remainder down here. So seven, again, seven looks like a one. That's one with the remainder of one that goes here. So back to the base 10 column now, your, your number of minutes. So 1, 4, and 8, that makes 13. Write down 3, carry over the 1. Now we're back to a base 6 column, the tens of minutes. 1 plus 5 plus 2 makes 8. 8 divided by 6 is 1, carried over here, with the remainder of 2 written down here. This column here, everything from here on out is base 10, so just 1 and 4 and 7 make 12, write down 2, carry over the 1, that gives you a 2 here, 1 and 1. So your final answer is 22 hours, 23 minutes, and 13 seconds. And we're going to do one more example involving three times, just to make sure you have addition down. So we're going to add 13 hours, 48 minutes, and 26 seconds, to 4 hours, 14 minutes, and then 52 seconds to 9 hours, 28 minutes, and 31 seconds. So 6 and 2 and 1, that's 9. Okay, not carrying over anything here. 2, 5, and 3, that adds up to 10. When you divide 10 by 6, you get 1. That's the carryover with the remainder of 4. So you write down 4 here. So you're going to get something 49. Now in this column, that's base 10. 1, 8, 4, and 8, I'll add to 21. So you write down the 1, carry over the 2. So 
these four numbers added up, 2, 4, 1, and 2, I'll add to 9. 9, when divided by 6, is 1, that's a carryover, with the remainder of 3. You write that 3 down here. Then, go over here, we carried over the 1, remember, so you add that to all these, you get 17. Uh, write down the 7, carry over the 1, gives you 2. So, your final answer is going to be 27 hours, 31 minutes, and 49 seconds. Or, since there are 24 hours in a day, you could also write it out as one day, and then that would leave you 3 hours, 31 minutes, and 49 seconds. Same difference, really. Now we're going to subtract, and there's a trick to borrowing. Just like when we borrow in regular subtraction, we have to borrow 10. If you're in a base 6 and you have to borrow, you're borrowing 6. So we're going to add 6 to that. So obviously we're going to have to do some borrowing in this problem right here. It's 22 hours, 17 minutes, and 45 seconds. Subtract 16 hours, 34 minutes, and 57 seconds. Okay, so 5 minus 7, we're going to have to borrow from over here. So this 4 becomes a 3. And of course we're going to have to borrow there again, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just worry about this, you know, working from right to left. 5 minus 7, so 15 minus 7. We Remember, we borrowed 10 from over here, so 15 minus 7 gives us 8. So now this 4 goes to a 3. Now 3 minus 5, we're going to have to borrow again. So we knock this 7 down to a 6, and we borrow 6. So we add that to what had become a 3. And this 4 got knocked down to a 3 because we borrowed over here as well. So 3, we're borrowing 6, so 3 added with 6 added makes 9, and then 9 minus 5 is 4, so that's where this 4 comes from. So going to the next column, well, our 7 becomes a 6 since we borrowed over here. 6 minus 4 is 2, no borrowing there, but we get over here and we're going to have to borrow again, so we again, since this is a base 6, we're borrowing 6 from over here, so this 2 becomes a 1, and then we're going to add, we borrowed 6, so we're going to add that to this 1, and that makes 7. And 7 minus 3 is 4, and that's where this 4 comes from. Now, go over here, and this 2 became a 1 because we borrowed, and we're going to have to borrow again. So this 2 becomes a 1, and you get nothing down here, and so 11 minus 6 gives us this 5. So... 5 hours, 42 minutes, and 48 seconds is your final answer here. And just one more problem here, just to make sure you have the subtraction down. Again, it's going to require us to do some borrowing. So, same, same deal here, except a different number. 12 hours, 27 minutes, and 8 seconds, minus 3 hours, 51 minutes, and 14 seconds. Okay, just like the last problem, 8 minus 4, we're in base 10, so that's going to be 4. And let me go over here, and, well, we're going to have to borrow, so we borrow 6 from over here. So 6 added to 0 is 6, minus 1 gives us 5. Okay, so we borrow, so the 7 becomes a 6. 6 minus 1 again is 5. No borrowing required from over here, but when we get to this column, 2 minus 5, that means we're going to have to borrow 6 from over here. So we're going to knock this 2 down to a 1, and the six, we're going to add 6 to 2. 2 and 6 make 8. 8 minus 5 is 3, and that's what's written here. And then this 2 became a 1 because we borrowed. So 1 minus 3, we're going to have to borrow from over here, so this 1 becomes nothing. And... So 11 minus 3 gives us 8. So our final answer to this problem is 8 hours, 35 minutes, and 54 seconds. So those are some basics in adding and subtracting time. And I'm going to have another tutorial about multiplying and dividing times. That's going to be really interesting. But for now, we'll just do addition and subtraction. So thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. And I hope you learned something.